Now, I recently did a video on the benefits of taking cold showers. But of course, those benefits only occur if you actually take a cold shower. A lot of people in the comment section just, you know, kind of chickened out because taking cold showers can be very, very uncomfortable. So today I want to discuss some tips how to do this and get the benefits without the incredible, painful, uncomfortableness that comes along with taking cold showers. The first thing you need to know about cold showers, just like any type of stress, is that when our bodies are too comfortable, when we get rid of too much stress, our bodies weaken. And so adding a little stress in your life, if it's not overwhelming, is a very, very positive thing, whether it's exercise, uh, intermittent fasting, or even taking a cold shower. So let me just kind of recap on the benefits. First thing, and this is quite big, is your immune system greatly responds. You would think if you're out in the cold and let's say it's raining or something, that you would get sick. But in fact, if the, the stress is not overwhelming, if you're not outside too long, you can actually strengthen your immune system to the point where you can resist pathogens. So there's huge immune benefits to cold therapy. Okay, that's number one. Now, also attached with that is inflammation. Now, I'm not just talking about inflammation from an infection. I'm talking about inflammation from an autoimmune disease. I'm talking about inflammation from our, especially arthritis. If you have arthritis, stiffness, okay, or pain, cold therapy can be huge for you. And if you combine several things at once, you can really strengthen your immune system as well. So if you combine exercise with uh, fasting, and this cold therapy, you can basically bulletproof yourself against a lot of pathogens. And a lot of people with Lyme disease get benefits from doing this as well. We have the immune system benefits. We also have brain benefits. I'm talking about both with your mood and your cognitive function. So people who are depressed, have anxiety, can benefit from this greatly. Also cognitive benefits, whether you wanna increase your focus, your concentration, get more attention, be more productive, cold therapy can help. Now, when you're exposed to cold therapy, there is a um, huge spike in certain neurotransmitters. I'm specifically talking about two, epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay? Now, epinephrine is also called adrenaline, okay? Now, these two uh, neurotransmitters, they act like hormones, but they work within the nervous system, in the brain, and also in the adrenal gland, through the nervous system. And part of the adrenal, the inside, called the medulla, is all neurological tissue. So your medulla in the adrenal produces adrenaline or noradrenaline, as well as certain parts of the brain. And so when we think of the sympathetic nervous system, which is the flight or fight, a lot of times people think cortisol, and that's one hormone, but the other two are adrenaline and noradrenaline. In fact, cold therapy, you can increase these two uh, neurotransmitters up to 550%. And so when you have more adrenaline in the body, you're going to be very, very awake. So it's going to wake you up very, very fast. And then there's all sorts of cascading effects that occur from this adrenaline and noradrenaline. You have increased production of mitochondria. That's the energy factories in the cell. And so just by taking regular cold showers, you can increase the number of mitochondria in your muscle cells. And that's pretty wild. And so you're going to have more capacity for energy and also an increased ability to burn things like fat. And so cold therapy is actually very beneficial to help you lose weight, specifically activating something called brown fat. Now, brown fat is different than white fat. Brown fat is tied into thermogenesis, uh, temperature regulation. So when you do cold therapy, you actually stimulate more production of your brown fat, which basically has more mitochondria. And doing that can elevate your metabolism. And that brown fat also taps into calories from the white fat, helping you oxidize more fat. So there are other things that go beyond just diet and exercise as far as losing weight. Now, the other really cool thing about cold therapy is that you can improve your blood sugars and make insulin more sensitive. So many people have a problem with insulin resistance. And so in other videos, I talk about apple cider vinegar, I talk about lowering your carbs, exercise, but you can also do this cold shower to help your blood sugars, which is quite amazing. And then the last big benefit I want to just mention briefly is longevity. Certain genes that are tied into living longer are stimulated 
when you're out in the cold because of the uh, survival uh, programs that are attached to surviving when you're freezing to death. Now, the other side note I want to mention about cold therapy is that when you sleep at night, especially when you get into the delta wave sleep, which is the deep sleep, the overall quality of the delta wave sleep is improved if your temperature in your room is slightly cooler. And it's worsened if you're trying to sleep when it's too hot out. Now, personally, I like to just use a very thin sheet. And I like to be on the cold side when I sleep. I sleep much better if I'm a little bit cooler than if I'm too hot. And before I get into the tips, uh, there's just one last really important uh, point I want to bring up about cold therapy in relationship to your circulation. Roughly, your body has about 62,000 miles of circulatory vessels throughout the body, including the veins and the arteries and the capillaries. You have a lot of vessels and there is muscle regulating the vasoconstriction and the vasodilation of that system. So when you're taking these cold showers, you are activating 62,000 miles of vessels which have muscles. And so you're creating this interesting effect of vasoconstriction and vasodilation and getting more blood flow to certain parts of your body that might need it. So in other words, there's a lot of positive things that are gonna happen if you can get up enough nerve to do these cold showers. All right, let's start with number one. Okay. What you do in the shower is you start with a very warm shower, okay? So you're taking a warm shower, you're turning up really, really hot. And then what you can do is you're just gonna basically on a nice gradient, start cooling it down, okay? Slowly until your body gets used to it. And then you're gonna go colder and colder and colder over a period of time to do this very gradually. So it's not so painful starting out because the biggest barrier that we're running into is to ignore your body saying, no, don't do it. So for some reason, your body has this great resistance uh, against being too cold. For example, I'm from Wisconsin, and they used to have this polar bear club in Lake Michigan in the winter. They would all run out there and jump in Lake Michigan. I mean, it gets cold in Wisconsin. Now, at the time, I thought these guys were crazy. But now that I know the benefits, I probably would have followed them and jumped into Lake Michigan. At least I would attempt to do it. All right, number two, this tip can help just um, counter some of the, the shock to your body. So let's say, for example, you have your shower on cold and you expose a certain part of your body, let's say your chest, okay? You start to rub your chest, okay? Rub it as the cold is going on your skin and that can help uh, make things a lot easier. And because these cold receptors are on the skin, okay? They're superficial. So if you're rubbing them, you'll tend to numb some of the intensity of that cold, shocking uh, sensation. All right, number three, you're gonna go into this cold water with complete relaxation. That's the opposite of what most people do. They're kind of going into this uh, with exhilaration, with this heightened fear or whatever, and they're not relaxed. And so it just makes things worse. So you wanna just kind of go into this with total relaxation. It'll be a lot easier for you to face this, um, this change in temperature. All right, and number four relates to number three. Start slowing your breath down, okay? Breathing very slowly in for maybe four to five seconds and out for four to five seconds. So the combination of being relaxed and slow, deep breaths can help you push past the pain of this cold. Number five, Turn on some music that you really, really like. Listening to certain types of music can help you push through the barriers. It can also help distract your mind from this sensation of being very, very cold. Number six is to do this cold shower right after you had some intense exercise where you're sweating. It'll just help counter some of the heat that you just generated. So it'll be a little bit easier. Number seven is just not to overthink this thing not to start to even talk yourself into it, just do it without thinking. Just jump right in there in the morning, kind of trick yourself into just doing it. All right, number eight. Ideally over time, I'm talking over weeks, you should go from maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, to 45 seconds to a minute, and then up to two minutes, okay? Once a day. That would be awesome if you could do that. So normally at 30 seconds, things should be a little bit easier. You'll start to feel kind of a numbing effect and you'll start to tolerate it more, but that first 30 seconds is the hardest. 
All right, number nine is just jump in the cold shower, but end with a very warm, hot shower to take away the uncomfortableness of what you just experienced. So if you're going to take a cold shower, just in your mind, realize that it's going to end with some nice, comfortable, pleasure moment. Okay, number 10. When you go into this cold shower, just do one part of your body, whether it's your legs, okay, or maybe your left arm and shoulder. This is what you're doing on a nice gradual gradient where it's not too intense, it's certain parts of your body, and then just keep adding another part each time you do it to make it easier. And the last one, number 11, is just to turn the shower on for a few seconds and then turn it off for a few seconds. On for a few seconds, off for a few seconds. And that way you're doing some type of intermittent type exposure, which definitely will break up the intensity and the pain from this uh, cold sensation. All right, so now I hope you have enough nerve to attempt these cold showers, okay? Now, if you haven't seen my other video on cold showers, the benefits, I think you should check that out. I put it up right here.